The Dave Hooker Show, represented by Banks and Jones, Tennessee's trial attorneys. Play to win, banksjones.com. The Dave Hooker Show. A presentation of Off the Hook Sports. Objective insight, expertise, top guest. Available on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, and the Off the Hook Sports app. Download now for free. Also available on offthehooksports.com. I compute and obey. Now to Dave Hooker. Ready. That intro <clears throat> says best guest and we got him. So stay tuned. Hit the like button if you're excited about hearing from Ron Slay. Like and subscribe. Do that. Also, Tennessee moves forward in the NCAA tournament. Kudos to Rick Barnes if he decided to take it easy on his guys coming down the stretch because they sure look rested. And Caleb Calhoun was the one who said that first. Kudos to Caleb as well. Kentucky loss. Is this John Calipari's? last dance i know there's a 30 million dollar buyout but we'll dig into that this day in tennessee sports history coming up will wade who used to be the coach at utc and then was the coach at lsu says oh man these uh investigations into previous payments before nil just isn't fair well that ties in to what tennessee's gone through with nico ia malayava so should schools be guilty for what is essentially nil now things they did in the past Pads are popping. Pads are popping. It's an exciting, exciting weekend as Tennessee's spring practice. They'll put on the full pads. They'll have a scrimmage on Saturday. So I'm going to give you four questions I have about Tennessee's scrimmage. So, Caleb, it was a late night for us as we did a post-game show. I hope everybody enjoyed that. How are you, sir? Are you properly rested? Uh, not properly rested, but rested enough to, you know, come in and deliver an amazing level of entertainment for you guys. Just hot. I mean, high, hot heat. That's what Caleb throws is high, hot heat. And he was leading for, I think, about five minutes, our celebrity bracket challenge. We'll also take a look at that. Just to say, just telling you. I picked 80 to 50 in that Tennessee game. And what was the score, you, Caleb? You did. You did. And it was 83 to 49. You got it nearly dead on. I had Jonas Adu going for 25 points. And if Rick Barnes didn't decide to call off the dogs and not overwork him, he would have gone for 25 points. Dude, he could I, He could have gone for 50. If they just said, listen, Tennessee gets $10 million if Adu scores 50, he would have had 60. It's today's tough question right now and it's brought to you by our friends at the hemp house today's tough question take a side take a stand the dave hooker show a presentation of off the hook sports.com all righty my question for you caleb it will be tennessee texas you may or may not know, but Rick Barnes was a longtime coach at Texas. Texas was building quite the a little resume there. And Texas said, no, you got to cruise. Will Rick Barnes take this game personally, given the fact that it's his former employer? I am, and I've told you guys this before, and I'll tell you guys this again. I am the last person who ever projects altruism on the people. I think everybody is somewhat fake and everybody usually loves themselves a little bit more than they love what they're doing. Um, you used to always say, Dave, that Philip Fulmer loves Tennessee, but he loves Fulmer a little bit more. I think that's the same with Nick Saban, right? He loves his, he loves Alabama players, but he loved his legacy a little bit more, didn't he? Yes. I think, it, I think most people do in general. I, exactly. I mean, even I even the most selfless people, let's say like preachers, they have to look out for their family and they're by themselves, right? Yes, exactly. Um, I think Rick Barnes is one of the exceptions. And I think he's not taking this Texas game personally at all. 
I don't think I think Rick Barnes is so Zen like in his religious beliefs. I think he is in this just for developing people and developing players and just loves the idea of doing that. I think he I don't think there's any sort of revenge factor or any sort of I want to get back at them for firing me on his mind whatsoever. I don't I actually don't. And I would I, there's no what there's very few coaches I would say that about. Rick Barnes is one of the coaches I would say that about. Uh, today's tough question brought to you by our friends at the hemp house that was a heck of a try caleb but mm, no i think you're wrong on this one okay because i think that it's impossible not to feel a little hurt i think he probably has still has friends and family in austin do you dwell on that no but it's kind of always in your craw. Now, everything you said about Rick Barnes is, is accurate. He's a Christian, and the Bible does tell us that we are human. And perhaps to feel anger or hatred is a sin in this case, but nobody's perfect. And I'm not even sure it is a sin. I think he's personally affected by it. I can't imagine how he couldn't be. The Hemp House, the premier hemp dispensary online, with a wide variety and great selection, strict standards to ensure you only receive the best in CBD or Delta products. Hemp House Chat with two Ts.com. Hemp House Chat with two Ts.com. Use the promo code HOOKED for 10% off. HOOKED for 10% off. He is one of the few coaches, maybe the only one that I can think of right now that I would tend to agree with you. I just can't quite make that leap. It's just got to hurt too bad. He had been there too long. I think he thought that was going to be his, his eventual home, Caleb. And you've got more insight into why Rick Barnes was let go. Share share some more of that with us. Yeah, so this all started. Rick Barnes started to get on the hot seat. I'm going to tell the full story real quick of Rick Barnes with his Texas tenure. He started to get on the hot seat roughly around 20, 2009, 2010. Texas had the number one team in the nation. They started to get like 15-0 and then stumbled to 24-10 and 10, bounced out in the first round. Then had two more average seasons, around a 32 exit, around a 64 exit. And then in 2012, 2013, they actually had a losing record and missed the NCAA tournament. And a lot of calls were for him to be fired that year. The next year, he turns it around, goes 24 and 11, makes the round of 32 and has everybody coming back. And there's this idea that 2014, 2015, Texas will be the team. He has everybody coming back. And then he adds Miles Turner. So it just seems like the perfect team to put together. And they stumble to 20 and 14 and get bounced out in the first round of the NCAA tournament. And the book out with Barnes was he couldn't coach. He could recruit, but he couldn't coach the players he recruited. He could coach the not great recruits, but he couldn't coach the five stars and the one and duns. And Texas fired him. And then Texas kind of came out and said, well, we could have kept him, but we just wanted to make sure he, we wanted him to change his assistance and get rid of his assistance and things like that and do this and that. Very David Cutcliffe style. And by the way, is there any dumber, sorry to interrupt, any dumber approach that you can have as an athletic director? We talked about this last night off the air. To go to you and say you've got to fire all your people that you know, that you built, so you get another year. But you've only got a year to build rapport with these guys. It's so stupid. If you are the head, like, it's so stupid. My thing, if, my, if I were the athletic director, here would be my thing. You hire who you want, I'll back you, but you're accountable for who you hire. And if who you hire doesn't work out, you're on the hook just as much as they are. Isn't that fair to say? That's fair. how you do yeah. it, right? Fine with that. Fine with that. Yeah. And I just think it's idiotic to, to expect somebody to flip, his, let's say, half a staff because it's offense or defense is struggling, to flip it and have four new guys. That doesn't make any sense to me. It doesn't make any sense to me what's happening at Ohio State when they go out and get Chip Kelly. I mean, how likely is that to implode? Quite likely to very likely is the answer, Caleb. Yes. And the same when they did that with Bobby Petrino at Texas A&M. They actually weirdly didn't implode, but they weren't great. But all of that being <laughs> I, I knew they would be amazingly average because Petrino, <laughs> yes. I, knew, I, I knew Petrino would get them to do the right things, technique and approach like, but I knew he wouldn't do anything special outside of the box. Amazingly average. That could be That's a good a start. That's, a, that's like when you see people in Congress and they like literally are like 50-50 with one party or the other. And they're like, they are radical centrist. <laughs> and so, um, yes. So Rick Barnes, but I'm I, Dave, here's why I still think he didn't have revenge on his mind. 
Texas's coach is Rodney Terry, who took over, by the way, after the whole Chris Beard scandal last year, and he became interim, and they named him full-time head coach. Rodney Terry was a Rick Barnes assistant for 10 years, from 2002 to 2011. I told you, Rick Barnes is in this business for developing people and developing players and building relationships. He has no greater relationship with somebody than he does Rodney Terry. Whatever he feels about what Texas did to him, he doesn't want to humiliate Rodney Terry. He's going to try to win. He's going to try to do his job, but he's not going to have this personal thing of I want to absolutely humiliate them and let them know they screwed up firing me because I think he has a lot of respect and a lot of love and a lot of admiration for Rodney Terry, the coach at Texas now. And so – Go ahead. Go ahead, Fish. And so this is – this is again, this is anti-everything I've ever believed about every person in sports ever. But I think the goodness in Rick Barnes – which includes his love for Rodney Terry trumps any ill will he has to Texas. Okay. But let me ask you this. Does it hurt more after the game? If Rick Barnes loses, does it hurt him more because of the tie brought to you by Rick Terry jewelry design? They want to be your jeweler looking for affordable game day jewelry. How about the fire opals, the Tennessee tradition, Rick Terry jewelry.com, Rick Terry jewelry.com. So don't you think that it would hurt a little bit more to lose to Texas? Or do you think it's that far in the rear view? I think it's that far in the rear view. I think losing to Texas, the only thing that would hurt him is that he, as he acknowledged on Vol Calls the other day, he's very frustrated that he can't advance in the NCAA tournament, and it's driving him insane. I do think that now. But I don't think it matters if he lost to Texas or anybody else. It, I mean, I, I think a part of him will be happy for Rodney Terry if he lost to Texas, quite honestly. And, I mean, well, again, yeah, I think... Be happy that Rodney Terry won. No, I, he's not going to be... I didn't say happy that Rodney Terry won, but you could, you know, happy for Rodney Terry. Like, you know, like when you... You know, like when your coach wins a game, and it's like, I feel bad for their players. But I'm happy for what we did. It'll be like that. So, but the reverse. So, but no, I guys, I know I'm crazy. You guys can call me crazy. You can call me naive, naive, and I'm not allowed to look at the message board. He gets Caleb all thrown off. You're no, 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 I know, I know nobody on the message. I don't think anybody on the message board has called me crazy. I'm just saying in general, people can call me crazy on this because people hate you when you attach like character to coaches because everybody's always like, my team's coach is great and wonderful, and he's an amazing person, and every other coach is mean. Okay, that's what they like to do. But the truth is, all of them are, outside of maybe Butch Jones and Urban Meyer, are relatively decent human beings who are a little bit cutthroat. And I I think think that's a nice way of putting it. I I think the vast majority, and I'm not saying Rick Barnes, the vast majority are mercenaries that care almost exclusively about themselves. About themselves. Uh, They don't care about their family. I hate to tell you this, but they don't care about their family. Because they're willing to move them across the nation 50 times. They're willing to take a job and live some there, somewhere without their family. It's all about the job. And that ultimately fills some need they have in being part of, of something special, which I'm not knocking. It can change their financial family tree forever. But it's ultimately about yourself, right? I mean, coaching. Yes, it's mostly about yourself. It is Unless, mostly about yourself. Especially at the high school level, right? And by the way, yeah. I think Rick Barnes, young Rick Barnes, was about himself too. I just think Rick Barnes at his age now has, you know, I I, I think he's like that born again type that like is very zen, like that genuinely thinks, um, put it this way, when Rick Barnes talks about his faith, I think he's genuine. I don't think he's like Hugh Freeze trying to cover for something. Um, I agree with that. And you would think by 69, 70 this summer that if there was any, crack in the armor that it would happen by now i always said that about tim tebow i mean to, when he gets to the point where he's 35 can we cut him some slack and maybe he just actually is a good dude the poll question is up on the youtube page and we want you to go ahead and jump on that it's brought to you by ray varner ford F-150 Ford Super Cab 44992. A 2023 Ford Escape All Wheel Drive 30,952. 2023 F-150 Ford Super Crew XLT 549. Ray Warner Ford, your East Tennessee Ford dealership. All right, it's pretty simple. Here is the question on the YouTube page Vote Now, and it's pretty much down the middle. Will Rick Barnes take the Texas game personally? Yes, they fired him after all. No, he's too good a person. 
they're not exactly mutually exclusive. I maybe could have done better with the question because you can be a good person and take it personally playing the team that fired you, right? No, oh, yeah, you can. You can. I, and also you can be a good person and be the type that like in the – in the realm of competitive spirit, you turn on some, you know, cold-blooded assassin, you know, mentality. I, I, I do believe that. I mean, some people take it beyond. Like, I think Michael Jordan may have taken it too far with some of his opponents, with the trash talk he did. But, you know, I think some... a lot of the elite athletes are so driven that in... And, and that goes to elite CEOs. I think that in a normal setting with uh, normal Jimmys and Joes that they would probably be perceived as a jack wagon by most of them. Yeah, you're right. I think you're probably right. They, and I mean, we know Peyton Manning was that way. How often did Peyton Manning light, light into, you know, he light into one of his players for not running the right route or doing something like that. I mean, there's video of him cussing them out all the time. Isn't there? Yes, uh, the answer is definitely a lot. Uh, that's that's how often he did it, a whole lot. So it is time for What the H, because it's got something uh, interesting that cropped up from the tournament. What the H brought to you by Boundless Moving. And this time, I'll turn it up. What the? What was he thinking? Release the hounds. The Dave Hooker Show. K -k 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 keep cool. A presentation of offthehooksports.com. All righty, what the H? Let's jump into that right now. I believe that John Calipari has a better than 50% chance of losing his job because I don't think he's fun to be around when things aren't going his way. I think he's stubborn. I don't think that he is going to be okay with somebody coming to him and making changes. I think he is a self-centered person more so than Kentucky centered. He has no ties there other than cashing a check and being the head coach. I got a weird hunch that John Calipari is going to be out. And I've talked to some people in Kentucky and they, they led me to believe that, that it's a real thing. And if it happens, it's probably going to be relatively soon, maybe by the end of the week. What are your thoughts on John Calipari? Is his run done in Lexington? No. And I will tell you why. I'm ready. I think Kentucky, at their heart, wants him to leave on his own, which he's not going to do because he has a lifetime contract. So why would he not just take in that, what is it, $9 million he's making a year? He's going to force him to fire him. Basically. It's thirty-three million dollars to buy him out, so it's a big chunk of change. But okay, let's get to that number in a second. But continue. Yes. Yeah, so Calipari is the when we talk about ultimate salesman, he's the ultimate salesman of college coaches, isn't he? Sure. He not that that's bad. No, not that it's bad, but literally, he is a salesman and nothing else, almost. And he makes you like him because when he talks, he is a likable interview, right? You've interviewed him, right? You can't help but like him when you talk to him, right? I enjoyed talking to him. He was way more open about getting fired than I thought he would be by the Nets. Yeah, so he immediately is already – this is why I think he's staying. He's he's doing this to save his job. He immediately said that he's going to um, mull changes to his philosophy after the first-round exit last night. He said, uh, quote, this is apparently um, – he basically said it's going to change how he approaches his team's roster. His quote yet last night was I've done this with young teams, my whole career, and it's going to be hard for me to change that because we've helped so many young people and their families that I don't see myself just saying, okay, we're not going to recruit freshmen. However, then he talked about how he's looking at changing his philosophy and adding more experience to the roster. And, I think he said all that to let Kentucky know, wink, wink, I'm not going to live and die with one and dones anymore if you don't want me to. I don't see him being a guy that's going to give because of pressure. I, I mean, he may believe that in his heart of hearts that that's the direction to go, but I don't think it's going to be because of pressure by Kentucky. There's no pressure when it comes to boundless moving. The type of service they can give is up to you from a two-hour minimum. 
to turnkey operations. They have you covered. Their motto, personal service without limits, isn't just a tagline. It's part of who they are. It's in their DNA. Boundless moving in Charlotte and all of East Tennessee. Boundless moving personal service without limits. I think if you told him he had to change his philosophy of one and done, that he's more likely to leave. I don't know how you have that conversation. That, to me, is as uncomfortable as you've got to fire your staff. Maybe even more uncomfortable because you're going to a guy and you're saying what you've done your whole career, what you believe in, as much as you believe in your family members and your wife because you have done this your entire life, is this one and done model? I think he would have a heartbeat if you tried to get him to change it. I think that's a little revisionist history on John Calipari because, yes, he always had one-and-done players. But, you know, when he was at Memphis, he had one one one-and-done player and usually a bunch of, like, regular four, three, four-year guys around him. So he had Derrick Rose the year they went to the national title game. But then they had Chris Douglas Roberts, Joey Dorsey, Robert Dozier. Those were all three-year guys. So it was like, get the star and then mix it with the experience or Tyreek Evans the year after. It, it was unprecedented what he did at Kentucky when he w- did all one and duns. I think he proactively said this. I don't think Kentucky forced him to. I think he proactively said it. And here's what I think he's doing. I, I'm going to go out here on a limb and you tell me if I'm crazy. Okay. John Calipari is hiding behind the one and done philosophy. That's and crazy. what I mean by. You think that's crazy? No, but when you tell me, tell me this is crazy. I'm always going to have that ready. Okay. John That's Calipari crazy. is John Calipari is hiding behind the one and done philosophy. And here's what I mean by that. Jay Wright said it last night on TV and people keep saying, you know, and and, and they, they're right on this. And I've said this for a while in an age of NIL, it's going to be harder to win with one and dones because experience is just going to outweigh it. Because as you said, Dave, you're going to see stars come back into college basketball for sophomores and junior seasons. Right. Mm-hmm. I agree. So John Calipari is leading you all to believe he's swindling you all right now. He's leading you all to believe that the reason he struggled is because this one and done philosophy doesn't work. No, he struggled because he just flat out can't coach. He's not a good ex. I see where you're going. No, you're yes. And target target hit dead center, sir. Yes, because what he wants you all to forget is in 2014, 2015, 2013, he had the number one recruiting class like he always did. But they all came back for 2014. He got the entire cast to return after going to the national title game. And then he got another number one class. The deepest team in college basketball history went undefeated. They go to the Final Four. They lose to Wisconsin. And Frank Kaminsky works Carl Anthony Towns. Dave, in what stratosphere should Frank Kaminsky play outplay Carl Anthony Towns under the basket? Should never. And John pointed out what you pointed out after we, I think, got off the air last night. You said Calipari's teams get beaten in the paint. He can't coach front court, which you pointed out last night. Let me ask you this. From the SEC, Kentucky's rivals, and Tennessee, do you want Calipari hanging around? Because his teams really can't get it done in the clutch, but you play a team every year that's uber more talented than you. So should Rick Barnes, when he – hits the press conference uh, rounds before the round of 32, does he say, I'll tell you what, a John Calipari they got up there at Lexington, he's incredible. Because when the other coach compliments you, that means they think you're a big loser. So should he go to the press conference today and say, we're excited about the game, but I want to take a second. And he could do this, man. He could preach at you, couldn't he? I want to take a second. And I just want to, so tell you that people are being too hard on John Calipari in Lexington, and he's given himself to this sport and bettering kids, and he's changed lives, and he deserves better. I call for a contract extension. I'm Rick Barnes. I endorse this message. Boom. That's what I would. I mean that. <laughs> you love you it. Guys you love it. I, I mean, I, I like what you're saying because here's the thing about Kentucky. I think Kentucky is that type of program where unless you hire Billy Gillespie, 90% of the time, they're going to be a great program. I like to, that's my Billy Gillespie impression. It's also my Steve Sarkeesian impression because it just means intoxicated. Hey! (laughs) Speaking of Sarkeesian and a former boss, the funniest is when Nick Saban lamented LSU firing Les Miles 
he was like the state of college football where you could fire a coach that's won a national title. And then LSU hired Ed Orgeron and Nick Saban was quiet. He's like, All right, I'll, I guess I'll take you guys having Ed Orgeron as head coach. Um, Not Orgeron, they can. Hey! That's a little bit different. <laughs> where were we? Reset us. Okay, so you does, do you want Kentucky there? I'm going to go a little bit deeper here, okay? I think you want to see Kentucky maybe fire Calipari and have to pay that buyout because if they do, Dave, then they will allow Mark Stoops to run the program into mediocrity because they'll never fire him. Now, here's the thing. Tennessee's always going to be, be better than Kentucky in football. But you never want to run the chance of Kentucky hiring a generational head coach in football, right? That can always happen at a place like Kentucky or anywhere, right? Oh, Where you could hire did. this. It did happen. All Bear Bryant. That you're right. They they hired Bear, Bear Bryant, and 67 years after 1950, they retroactively declared that season a national championship season because that's what they, that's what Kentucky does. You never want now. Mark Stoops is a not a bad coach. I think he's a pretty good coach, but I think if you're Tennessee, you're happy with Mark Stoops at Kentucky, aren't you? Yeah. Like you're not worried about that. Yeah, I'm good with that. If they fire John Calipari and pay that buyout. They're going to be stuck with Mark Stoops for a long time, and they're not going to think any bigger than Mark Stoops because they're not going to pay any buyout to get rid of Mark Stoops. They get rid and of John Calipari. They have to keep Stoops. They don't have, as much as we knock J John Calipari, a championship-winning coach. So suddenly, Kentucky's whole athletic department doesn't look so great. By the way, I was told – that Mitch Barnhart, who's the athletic director, who is a former associate athletic director at Tennessee, that he exited stage left as quickly as possible, avoiding reporters. These conversations are happening. This is not something that we're manufacturing. There are people discussing whether or not they want Calipari back, and there are people discussing in Calipari's family whether or not he wants to be back. This will be another one of those things that you can say you heard it first on Off the Hook Sports. But I, I, I do believe that John Calipari will not give an inch on cash. There is going to be no settlement. He will take the booze. Remember that one dude had a bag on his head at Kentucky and Rupp? Was that two years ago? He is not going to feel pressured by that at all he could have a nine-year-old daughter get beat up at school because he lost to louisville and he's going to be like we just got to get better and that's it will not affect him at all all the outside pressure he's not going to meet them halfway at 15 million it's going to be 33 point blah 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 million and blah 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 change and that's what he's going to have to have Oh, absolutely. And like, it's funny because what we're talking about, let's talk about what you're saying. And I agree with you. John Calipari is not thin skinned, right? He is as thick skinned as they come. It, he, he doesn't care. Give me my money. Yeah, That's I agree. Exactly what he said when I had him on the air. I now remember when I said it. he said, I said, all right, I won't be your coach. Give me my money. Yeah, I mean, this is a let's call it what it is. John Calipari is born in Pittsburgh and spent, and before he went to Memphis in 2000, John Calipari's entire tenure was a Northeastern basketball coach, right? Big yeah. East era, area, Atlantic 10, right? Yes. There is, I, I, guys, I, I'm just going to tell you this, and Dave can tell you this too. Northeastern media is brutal to their head coaches. They're brutal to them. And I kinda... new, like New York media, Jersey media, they are so much more brutal to Calipari than even Kentucky media could be to Calipari, quite yeah, honestly. See, I, I think that's an old notion because I don't think media has been able to replace those reporters, those tough reporters, with more tough reporters because of budgetary issues. I I don't know that it's just, I mean, it's tougher in New York than it would be in Knoxville on the balls. Don't get me wrong. But – I don't think the media in in big cities in New York City is as much of a factor as it used to be. I don't know. I still think regional media is a thing. And it because okay, Knoxville's always been a bigger city than other SEC towns. I mean, Dave, just in my short time with you, I've noticed Knoxville media is much rougher on Tennessee than Tuscaloosa media is on Alabama. I mean, it's they just are. Now, now to be fair, there's been more reason to be tough on Tennessee the past 15 years than there has been to be tough on Alabama. Okay, fair enough. But like just in general, 
I, I, I still, I get what you're saying, particularly with message boards. You can't just ignore things in the message boards anymore. And that has as much of an impact as anything. And by the way, Kentucky's message board sites crashed last night. I don't know if you know that because people were so mad. Um, Can I share one slightly off color thing that I saw on a Kentucky message board? Sure. Some guy said, what would you do to if John Calipari would get fired right this moment? The guy responded on the message board. He said, I would have relations with your dad. And then the guy's response was, I would do <laughs> his own dad. Come on. Really? That's a really. Uh, uh, you should, there's an Instagram story of that. Of, uh, yeah, of, I mean, of, at that point, you're thinking, whoa, Kentucky lost to Oakland. You know what I need is a little homosexual incest. I mean, that is bizarro. He's Caleb Calhoun. Dave Hooker will be back in two minutes off the hook sports. And uh, coming up, we're going to break down Tennessee's first scrimmage this weekend and also this day in Tennessee football history. And Ron Slay will join us and T. Scott Jones as well, the latest on that ACC lawsuit. Hang with me for two, and we'll give you more info in a good time right after this. Now in its 45th year, the second and third generations continue Joe Newbert's commitment. His vision of what this business needed to be, we still try to live up to that. Joe Newbert Collision Center. Hi, I'm Rick Terry, and we at Rick Terry Jewelry Designs pride ourselves in the highest quality craftsmanship from a family-owned business here in Knoxville for over 35 years. At Rick Terry Jewelry Designs, we also take pride in being an affordable option for all your game day accessories, especially those fire opals. At Rick Terry Jewelry Designs, we want to be your jeweler every day and especially on game day. Go Vols! Hi, Mike Davis here with City Heating and Air, reminding you to always dare to compare. Our team provides quality local heating and air service, installation, and maintenance across East Tennessee. We use only the best equipment like American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning for your residential, new construction, or commercial needs. Honesty, dependability, and customer satisfaction have been the cornerstones of our business since 1961. City Heat and Air. There's your man. We believe every day is a good day to be thirsty. With free samples on draft and lots of flavors to choose from, Tennessee Cider Company prepares a hard cider that's easy to enjoy. Some say it's the signature cider of the South. Others say it's the cure to your craving. They all say you'll savor every sip. The area of Gatlinburg has so much to offer, and so does Tennessee Cider Company. Add us to your list for shopping and fun experiences. You'll be glad you made the trip. Find our cidery in the Mountain Mall on the Gatlinburg Parkway. Sip smart. Sip the good stuff. Sip Tennessee Cider Company. Thirsty yet? Doors open at 10 a.m. What's up, everybody? This is Jacob Warren asking you to like, subscribe, and share. Dave needs this. The Dave Hooker Show, represented by Banks and Jones, Tennessee's trial attorney. Play to win, banksjones.com. Uh, who's this guy? Hello, wizard. The Dave Hooker Show, Ooh. a presentation of Off the Hook Sports. What? YouTube, Apple, Spotify, and the free Off the Hook Sports app. Back to Dave Hooker. <laughs> I'm just imagining a couple of Kentucky fans sitting around, maybe having a beer, uh, you know, lamenting today what happened with Oakland beating the Cats. Sun did come up, but it sure doesn't feel like it in Lexington. And two guys talking at the corner of the bar, they're waiting for their chips and sauce. It's a Mexican restaurant. And one of them goes, So uh uh I'd be willing to you know get with your dad if they could fire Coach Cal. I'm just imagining how that turns into a conversation. Because the other guy has got to be, whoa, that was a left turn. But instead, he says, me do. Well, 
<laughs> I gotta show you an Instagram story, and it's I'm not gonna I'm I'm cleaning it up for you. Um, but um, cleaning it up a lot. Let me let me tell everybody real quick. If you don't care, you need to hit that like and subscribe button. We really appreciate that. It means a lot for the show, a lot for the program, and we certainly encourage you to support our sponsors because we only pick the best ones in each individual business. It's fact. City heating and air conditioning, 50 years in East Tennessee. Integrity matters. Don't trust a five-by-night HVAC company to tell you that you need a new unit that could cost you thousands or more. City heating and air. That's cityheatandair.com, cityheatandair.com. What are you cleaning up for me, Caleb? So uh, Instagram story a few years ago that they interviewed fans all over at tailgates for the NFL, and they were in Buffalo, and they were interviewing Buffalo fans, and one was like, what would you do for Buffalo to win a Super Bowl? And he said, I perform a sex act on my dad. Hey. And wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yes, Maybe this is a thing. Maybe yeah. this is not mainstream because we're pretty mainstream. I, we're normal dudes, right? We're not doing crazy stuff, you know, not getting wild on the weekends and all that good stuff. So, I mean, it is, uh, maybe that's just, I don't know. Maybe that's what's out there. And like a, <laughs> an altered universe, people are able to. Kentucky does border fate. West Virginia, so you know. Yeah, people are able to affect fate. Well, only Kentucky fans are able to affect fate by incest. I mean, make, first of all, I want to know. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but neither does the one and done. What magical being that alters the outcome of the universe, like, sets those stipulations? Who would set that stipulation to be like, all right, I'll give you a championship, but I need you to do this for your dad? I get the feeling that's what Lucifer did as he's headed out the door. <laughs> right. Like, hey, right. Let me go ahead and add this as one last temptation <laughs> to do something horrid. We're going <laughs> to change it up right now. Will Wade says lives ruined. Over the FBI probe, the former LSU head coach also coached in the UT system at UTC. Now he has a victory in the NCAA tournament. He's back and he's uh, all looking good, except for maybe a couple of pounds. But he said the FBI ruined people's lives with their probe into what LSU was doing, which leads me to the whole concept of should schools that were performing illegal things five years ago before NIL be punished for it. And that's where the Nico Ia Maleava comes up because the NCAA tried to mess with the University of Tennessee when it came to Ia Maleava. And he said, step off. Uh, we're state suit. So, what are your thoughts on that? Should you be punished for stuff you did before the rules changed? Well, as far as Nico's goes, NIL was a thing even when Nico was being recruited. It's just that they had they broke some NCAA rules that made no sense about NIL. But I'm gonna say I'm gonna say it depends on what it was. And and I know I know it's a cop out for me to do that, but he, you know, I I am going to say yes, and here's why. Here's why I'm going to say yes. It wasn't just nil back in the day when you were cheating and doing all this stuff. You also, if you were going to get in trouble, you had players locked into a program at that point because the transfer portal didn't exist, or it didn't. It wasn't what it was. Right. So players were stuck in a bad situation. This is, by the way, I want to go back 10, 13, 12 years. This is why what Hugh Freeze did was so was so despicable. Forget the prostitution scandal. But what happened was <laughs> Ole Miss was being investigated for paying players. Hugh Freeze wanted to keep his recruiting class together and have them stuck in the program, even though he knew they were about to go on probation. So they leaked a bunch of stories out that, no, this wasn't what happened under Hugh Freeze. This happened under Houston Nutt, the coach before him. And after signing day happened, they willingly admitted that they lied on all that. And then, of course, Houston Nutt filed a defamation suit against all this. And in that defamation suit is when it was revealed that Hugh Freeze was, you know, making calls to a bunch of hookers. So, no offense, Dave. But <laughs> um, yeah, our phones were ringing off the hook at the uh, hooker household. <laughs> Who's that? It's Hugh again. <laughs> Pastor Hugh. Um, I like you but, said a word there for a second. Go ahead. 
But what I'm saying is that the cheating itself was dis wasn't what was despicable. What's happening? Th what was happening though before this era? You weren't just cheating. You were you were locking players in for their future with your program, no matter what happened to your program. And I think that's where the real problem was. It was much more of a hassle to transfer. So that's why I do think you should still be punished, because I think you put players' futures at risk when you did that. Uh, Travis says, welcome to the Freaky Friday show with Creepy Uncle Dave and Crazy Caleb. So that's about <laughs> as far as I can go on my goofy jokes. Um, listen, the bottom line is it would have to be something blatant. But if it came out that somebody fairly recent, I mean, you can't, the statute of limitations, I was going to say Reggie White just as a guy, but you can't go back that far, surely to goodness. So it would have to be something that happened relatively soon before NIL was thrown out there. I mean, that's basically what they tried to scare Tennessee with because those are really not rules any anymore. I mean, they can call them rules if they want to. I just don't see a scenario in which they can continue to punish people beforehand. I'll say this. If you broke a rule, when it was a rule, you should be punished. You should be punished. I don't, if they change this, I got a speeding ticket two weeks ago. I mentioned this. If they change the speed limit on I-75, they don't send me a refund. So it, to me, you should, you should still pay the price. You signed that national letter of intent, which you agreed to not take money. And you know, as anybody in the college athletics administration, you don't pay money. So to me, you're still on the hook for that. But I don't think they'll ever actually do it. And I think the state of Tennessee told them you can't do it. And they can't. Yeah. And I think what upsets Wade is that, and to steal man his point a little bit, um, he says that look, a lot of people were affected by something that aren't rules anymore, so it's unfair, but I agree there were rules then. And also, doesn't Will Wade deserve some blame for that in the sense of Will Wade, he threw two middle fingers up to the NCAA and the FBI probe, right? Totally fought and them the whole way. It was even more egregious than Bruce Pearl. Oh, yeah, Bruce Pearl, whatever you I, I think about him and Stephen Pearl taking shots at Tennessee and the midlife crisis coaches they are. Um, uh, Bruce Pearl, I will say at Auburn, he he just went quiet, let Auburn accept a one-year postseason ban, and they called it a day and because they were part of that same FBI probe. And so what Will Wade was like, nope, I'm throwing two birds up, and I'm going to fight this the whole way, and I think that was problem on its own. By the way, I just want to point this out since he's at McNeese State. This is really funny, Dave. This is the second coach within 20 years that 25, excuse me, that McNeese State has hired after he was fired from another school for a scandal because they also hired a uh, Tick Price at McNeese State back in 2000. For those who don't know, Tick Price was at Memphis after Larry Finch in 99 and he got fired because he was having sexual relations with a student at school. Mm, SD <laughs> Scout guy says, my uncle got drafted into the Army the week before they ended the draft. He still had to serve the full term. Absolutely right. Sorry yeah. for your uncle. I, I hope he came back okay, but that's um, that's the way things go. Um, here's the bottom line is, and you don't hear me call names a lot, do you? I usually say he is a bad person instead of he's a blank. Will Wade's a cheater. Okay, so I talked to somebody who, who is one of the most successful college basketball coaches out there, period. Hundreds of wins. And immediately when Will Wade took the LSU job, you know what he told me, Caleb? What he, he said, said, when you go to LSU and that basketball program, it's not supported by the athletic department, which means, like the football team is, which means you'll have to cheat. And I said, really? He said, yes, basically everybody in the coaching community knows there are certain schools, LSU being one of them, as a basketball coach, when you go there, you're going to have to cheat. So it's not like he had a rogue assistant. It's not like he made a mistake at a barbecue. He knew he had to cheat when he left Chattanooga. Yeah, he and also, you know this, That's even not. Tennessee would do this. If you're being investigated, they'll throw you to the wolves to protect the football program. And so... 
And that's the big thing. Now, Will Wade, let's remember this. He's caught on tape. He's recorded on wiretaps, basically talking with an you know, arranging two of his players with an agent runner, making cash deals for them when it's illegal. He's asked by his superiors to sit down and discuss the wiretap. And he refused. He said, no, if your boss tells you, I think you broke some rules. Uh, I need you to come talk to me real quick. And you say, no, you're getting fired. Like, and yes. And on top of that, the thing that stood out to me about Will Wade was every single fellow coach in the SEC despised him. Remember that? Yep. And not despise like, there's a despise of I can't beat them, I'm jealous. There's another despise of this guy just, he just tries to hack off everybody. And and so it's, it's I don't, the thing I, the, the thing I will say with Will Wade is, don't throw your middle fingers up to everybody. Don't say, I don't care. Nothing's wrong. I can do what I want. Y'all can't do anything to me. And then when you, then when it comes back to bite, you say, look at all the lives that were ruined by this. This is unfair. I just, I, I don't like it when people do that. You know, I'm like, you rubbed your nose in the idea that you could get away with anything. And then when you couldn't, you complain about the lives that were ruined. Well, maybe you shouldn't have rubbed your nose in everything in everybody's face the whole time. You know, yeah. this is the... I mean, this is my biggest reason for, I mean, I say gambling, you shouldn't be allowed back in the sport no matter what. But my biggest reason for Pete Rose is Pete Rose rubbed baseball's face in the fact that he was gambling on the sport. And he was acting like a you-know-what in the 80s. And then when they banned him for life, now he go and admits it 15 years later. He now goes on this like, you know, I just want to be back in baseball. I got grandkids. Let me ask like, you this. What? Well, and he's... Was he still rubbing everybody's nose in it last night when he's smiling and he hawing and having a good time? Oh, you can ask me. I got fired. No big deal. I, to me, he seemed like he was still doing the, the, the same thing. They're always doing the same thing at Dynasty Pools and Spas. And what is that? They're putting out the best spas that you could possibly select. And you need to stop by their showroom and check out their fantastic selection of top-notch spas in that showroom in Athens. You make your pick and get ready because Dynasty Pools and Spas delivers within 125 miles and includes everything with every spa cover. They got the cover lift. They got steps, chemicals, and delivery all at no extra charge. Just down the road in Athens, you pick the spas you want, oftentimes dis discounted with military discounts, first responder discounts, blemish models, or mention Off the Hook Sports. Off the Hook Sports for 500 buckaroos off 500 buckaroos off there's a discount for you on spas made right there in east tennessee support local dynasty pools and spas also has the best chemicals for you in your pool again made in east tennessee support local dynasty pools and spas 500 bucks for you if you mention off the hook sports dynasty pools and spas we're gonna talk tennessee pop and pads a scrimmage in 60 seconds the show represented by banks and jones and Jones? Well, it's because they're Tennessee's trial attorney. You can play to win with Banks and Jones because they'll go to trial. You've heard of other lawyers. They say they'll go to trial and fight for you. They won't. They just want to settle. That's the easiest way out. Well, that's not Banks and Jones, led by T. Scott Jones. They won't settle. They'll go to trial for you. Tennessee's trial attorney. They play to win. Truly, Tennessee's trial attorney when it comes to criminal defense or personal injury. Why settle? It's Banks and Jones. T. Scott Jones. Banksandjones.com. Four Downs brought to you by Dynasty Spas, the most comfortable spas made in the United States of America, right here in East Tennessee. Drop in for the all-new showroom in Athens. Dynasty Spas, perfect for all four seasons. Four Downs, presented by Off the Hook Sports. All right, let's jump into the spa with Cooper Mays. Coop, what should people do? Cooper Mays here. Hit like and subscribe. All right, Coop's got pads on tomorrow as Tennessee will hold its first scrimmage. So let's dive into that right now as there are some things that I would like to see out of this scrimmage. There are some, some questions I would like answered. I'm not looking for a lot. This is not the biggest scrimmage of the fall. That will be in about two weeks, and then I'll have a light scrimmage to close things out. But – 
I got a couple of questions, and that is our uh, four downs, as brought to you by Dynasty Pools and Spas. And first, I want to go with safety dance. What down is it, Coop? Coop here. First down. All right. Reports concerning freshman defensive back Boo Carter have been incredibly positive, and that's coming from people I talk to within the program. I'm not going to be surprised if he starts a strong safety as a freshman. Jacoby Thomas, who transferred from Middle Tennessee State, has proven he can be a factor in the ball's defensive back rotation this fall, most likely at free safety. So I wonder if Tennessee's ahead of schedule in putting their secondary together, because I think there's a chance that they already have a direction, and that might be Carter and Thomas. Nothing's 100% now. We're just five days deep in the camp. But I think there's a chance that, that that's what they're looking at first. Yeah, I and, and that's something I think we predicted too. We thought that those two I'm would sure. end up being the starters. Um, and so I, I would agree that those are ever predict a freshman starter is kind of makes me feel naughty. Oh, Dave feels naughty. <laughs> no, I mean it's freshmen nine times out of ten don't contribute. I don't care how good they are. Dave, you naughty hooker, you okay, sorry. It's embarrassing myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I I think Jacoby Thomas was picked up specifically so he would fill that other safety void. I think they were hoping for Boo Carter. Now I'm going to say this: I've covered this coaching staff enough. They 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 have ideas of who they want to fill voids before practice starts, and they give those that they give those players every chance in the world to fill that void. Is that fair to say, Dave? Yes. Like, yeah. They. I don't think. I'm just going to say this and you guys can, and, and people can criticize me for this, but I don't think Josh Heupel's practices are run fairly. I think Josh Heupel has favorites before he starts practice. And then he tries to make his favorites win the starting jobs. And I think, well, I mean, all, all practices are more contrived than you would think. I, I, there have been times that I know for a fact that Tennessee named their captains and that's not who the players voted for. The coaches just took their vote, didn't tell them what the vote was, and just changed it. Yeah. So, I mean, practice is being contrived, and I think the spring games are often contrived to make somebody look good. I will go ahead and tell you that Nico Ia Maliava will throw for 5 million yards in the spring game. Guaranteed. What down is it, Coop? Cooper Mays here. Second down. All right. Who will play guard? So, you got this Andre Curicat. You bring in, you're excited. He's going to be a starter on the offensive line in 2023. That didn't happen until there was an injury in which he was able to play a bit and start a bit. Now you come into this season and he's banged up and he's limited in spring practice. Listen, I'm not knocking a guy if he's hurt, but at some point he's going to lose his opportunity. Now, right now, what I've been told is it will be Kerrig on the left and then Javante Spragans at the right guard position. Spragans, of course, is out with an injury, but that's who it's that's who they would like for it to be. Lampley, eh, probably not physically there yet. Maybe won't ever be. Look he's for guys like fire guy. How is he not physically there yet? <laughs> he's just not that athletically gifted. Like you or me. I mean, you could give you or me 15 years and we would. Yeah, be that, that's not a there yet. That's just a not there. That's that's not that guy. Um, yeah. I think a guy like Vice and Lang needs to be ready. You know, they say don't get ready. Stay ready. If he stays ready, I wouldn't be surprised if he saw some significant playing time or push for a job. Because you've got to be frustrated with Keurig, even if he's legitimately hurt, and I don't ever want to question it and injury. What down? Cooper Mays here. Where will Dante Thornton play? We've discussed this before. He's got the body of an outside receiver. He's got the skills of both slot X and Y. So he can play whatever you want him to, but it's just where you want him and where he's the best fit. They tried to shoehorn him in at slot. I wouldn't be surprised if he's outside, especially if Squirrel White comes ready to play and he can play the slot position. But I'm interested to see where Dante Thornton plays. And I got a little respect for him after a really shaky start. He turned it around and he was playing well, and that's when he got hurt, and I hate that. 
Yeah, I think he's going to spend more time at wide out because I think they need Squirrel White in the slot. So I think I think we're seeing the rotation come together of what it's going to be. It's going to be Brew McCoy, Dante Thornton, and Squirrel White, which was what they wanted last year and didn't get. All right. So that was third down, fourth down, Coop. All SEC center Cooper Mays here, fourth down. All right. I can't leave this one out, can I? How will Nico do? Let's address the Nico situation and what I'm hearing. And I remind you that Four Downs is brought to you by Dynasty Pools and Spas. Having the best spas made right here in the United States of America in your backyard. Dynasty Pools and Spas, their showroom is open in Athens right off the interstate. You can stop by and check out the best hot tubs and spas in the market. And then delivery, yes, they can do that. It's Knoxville or Chattanooga. They've got complete support spa cover and chemicals to keep your spa bubbling at its best. They also have pool chemicals as well. Dynasty Pools and Spas, amazing discounts for first responders, military, and even some blemish models. It can save you a ton, and no one will ever notice. Mention Off the Hook Sports, get $500 off. Mention Off the Hook Sports, get $500 off. Dynasty Pools and Spas. Go to DynastyPoolsAndSpas.com or stop by that showroom in Athens. DynastyPoolsAndSpas.com. Dynasty Pools and Spas. All right, before Nico, we talked about guards. Kalen says Lang, Vincent Lang, Bison Lang needs reps at center as well. We need Cooper as oh, we need a backup to Cooper. He is getting reps at center, and I think he'll eventually slide into that position once Cooper's gone. But I think for now he's a guard because they have to have him there. Now let's get to the Nico conversation. I, I, I hate to be boring, but everything I keep hearing is that he's doing everything he's supposed to. This coaching staff, I believe, is pushing him really hard to be a leader. And it's been evident by people I've talked to at practice that he is, you know, he he is, he is becoming that. In other words, he's visiting with someone after each and every play to maybe ask, "What did you see?" or "You need to do this." Or so he's assuming that leadership role, and it's probably forcing it a little bit. But he's a natural leader anyway, so I'm not concerned about. Nico Ia Maleava being a leader. It did it, it is it it's just in him. It's what he is. It's innate. Yeah, I saw the Moxie in him just in that citrus bowl. And you can tell when someone has it or not. And it's I, they may force it on him, but they're forcing it on forcing it on a guy who can be that. Unlike I've seen that happen before. You probably have too, Dave, where coaches tried to force a quiet guy to be a leader, and that never mm -hmm. works ever. I think Buzz Peterson one time sent CJ Watson to a leadership camp because he was tired of CJ Watson not being vocal enough in practice. And I'm like, you you, you can't do that. So yeah, I, I think that Nico is, that's that's really the big thing is spring is him just emerging as a leader and building rapport. I think he's fine. You're not going to see much. Look, I'm going to be honest. I think Hypo is going to keep it very reserved in the spring game. Hypo didn't want the spring game. Let's be honest. We know that. He didn't want the spring game. He would he would nuke that in a heartbeat if he could. He would. You're right. He would. Yeah. And then he was forced to. So... Of course, I also think that Josh Heupel would get rid of all the fans and the cheerleaders and, cheerleaders and everything and just play ball. I don't think he would care if it was just out in the middle of the field. I think he's that type of guy. Probably. he's a, he, he. Josh Heupel coaches for the same enjoyment that you get out of playing NCAA football, the video game. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty much what he's in it for. Yep. Yep. And so, yeah, I, I think that you're not going to get much from the spring game with this. Hypel's just want to going to want to get it over with, and he's going to call it a day. He's going to give a press conference and say nothing, and you're not going to glean anything from Nico. But I think I think he might try to put on a show with his other quarterbacks in that game. You're going to see Gaston Moore just throw for 500 yards. We remind you the portions of the program are brought to you by our friends at BetUS. That's BetUS, 125% bonus on your first three deposits. BetUS, plus that 10% gambler's insurance. It's pretty awesome. BetUS. America's favorite sportsbook and casino. Live betting and racebook. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. Bet US, where the game begins. Hey, look, there's Ron Slay. Ron, can you give me two minutes to pay the bills? Let's do it, baby. 
Sports Treasures in North Knoxville is one of the South's largest sports cards and memorabilia dealers, featuring over 10 million sports cards from vintage to modern. Sports Treasures carries a full line of hobby boxes, singles, autographed memorabilia, Tennessee Vol collectibles, fan cave decorations, and so much more. See a museum full of collectibles at Sports Treasures, 4819 North Broadway in Fountain City, and Sports Treasures on Facebook. Sports Treasures, where the real sports fan goes to shop. Have you seen the latest TriStar Hats Co. product? TriStar Hats Co.? What's that? You know, those really cool hats, shirts, tumblers, and even license plates with three stars like the official Tennessee flag and stripes like the American flag. Pretty patriotic if you ask me. Ah, I gotcha. Seen those. Those are cool. Where can I get them? Simple. TriStarHatsCo.com. And if you order now, there's 10% on any order $50 or more. Plus, use the promo code HOOKED. With the promo code HOOKED, you get 10% off. That's HOOKED. And don't forget free shipping with any order over 50 bucks. Stock up at TriStarHatsCo.com. That's TriStarHatsCo.com. There are plenty of wannabes out there, so make sure you go to TriStarHatsCo.com for the best quality and customer service. Will do, and I'll be sure to use the promo code HOOKED. That's HOOKED when I do to save an additional 10% off. TriStarHatsCo.com. TriStar Hats Co. is a trademark of TriStar Hats Co. LLC. Any use without express written consent is prohibited. Now in its 45th year, the second and third generations continue Joe Newbert's commitment. His vision of what this business needed to be, we still try to live up to that. If we wouldn't put our family in it, we're not going to put their family in it. If you're going to say that you're doing the best work in Knoxville, now saying it's one thing, producing it and providing it's another. The largest family-owned collision center in Knoxville is Joe Newbert Collision Center. The Dave Hooker Show, represented by Banks and Jones, Tennessee's trial attorneys. Speech. Play to win, banksjones.com. Um, who's this guy? Hello, wizard! The Dave Hooker Show, Ooh. a presentation of Off the Hook Sports. What? YouTube, Apple, Spotify, and the free Off the Hook Sports app. Back to Dave Hooker. All right, welcome back. It's Ron Slay brought to you by our friends at Dynasty Pools and Spas. Let's go ahead and dive into a couple of different things. First, Ron, how are you, sir? Feeling great, man. How you guys doing? I'm good. Um, yesterday was tremendous. Fun. Y- yesterday was yesterday was fun. I was I got my son um, in town for spring break. It it fell, mm-hmm. and we watched it all day, and it was just kind of okay. I thought, and then the night. After at about four or five, six o'clock, then you start having a couple of upsets, and obviously Kentucky got beat. Um, I'm wondering, can I ask Caleb something about how I should host the show real quick? Yes, please do. Okay, Caleb, should I bring up our earlier topic because I think it's so funny about the post on the Kentucky basketball? Yeah, sure, let's do it. I okay. want to hear what Ron has to say. Ron, I don't have the post with me, but I saw it and I can send it to you because it's hilarious. Guy okay. on Kentucky message board says. What would you do if you could guarantee that Calipari's fired? He said, I would sleep with your dad. The guy responded, I would too. <laughs> yes, he said he'd sleep with his own dad. <laughs> wow. Okay. They, they got me. They got me with that one. I'm, I'm, I'm... <laughs> Ron Slay speechless, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, that's a... <laughs> I've been trying to do too. this for twenty years. Yeah, I, I think I think the part that got me is that I would too. Like I think it was enough with him doing it. I think why you got to join in, but okay. Uh, <laughs> I, guess, I guess when you want him gone, you want him gone. Yeah, I don't know if it's <laughs> same time or you have. To, I, I don't know how that works. But anyway, uh, Ron, let's dig into it. Tennessee it. looked, I thought, fan, fantastic last night. But I do have to to say, in all fairness. That St. Peter team was just completely outmatched physically. Yeah. And, and, you know, that's the funny thing. I kept trying to explain to people coming into it. Um, these teams that you see, you get familiar with the names and you start to automatically think of the Cinderella runs, the dominance they may have had, instead of looking at the product that they're putting on the floor. When you look at Kentucky, it's the same thing. I don't, I don't understand why everybody was surprised that it happened that way. Like this – you were depending on a team to score through the NCAA tournament. Not play defense, but score all the way through. Not a mix, 
but just outscore everybody. So when you look at St. Peter's, I thought the same thing. This is not Shaheen Holloway's team. It's one guy left over from that that Cinderella run that they had, and it was a great one. Um, a friend of mine that, that coaches with them now, he led them in scoring, um, and I think it's the top five in NCAA history. Keedron Clark is on the bench, and we were, we were texting before the matchup, um, and he was like, man, this team looked really good on film, man. I, I can't wait to see what they look like up close, and it lived up to the hype, man. I think they were – they got to see everything they thought they would when looking at a Tennessee team click on all cylinders and play the way they play, even with all the turnovers they had. Yeah, so Ron, um, I, I agree, and also I think you you got to be you got to be the team that can score from the outside because if you're a team that plays inside out basketball at that small level, you're playing inside out with six six one ninety guys, not six eleven two thirty guys like Tennessee has. And I said yeah. before the game last night, Jonas Ado would dominate. So I'm not looking. I don't really read too much into that, but. Did, I, did we lose Ron? Mm, yeah, I think we lost Ron. What was the question going to be? I'll see how I go. There we got Ron. Oh, back here he is. There you go. Go ahead. What, what, to try to what you do, Ron? That must be somebody from Kentucky. It must be somebody <laughs> from Kentucky. They try to get me off the airwaves, man. Or, or their dad. Or, <laughs> <laughs> maybe, a group, maybe a group of dads. Oh, no. Oh, gosh. Oh. Right, please ask the question, Caleb. Just ask a question. Any question about basketball. Do they have dad buds or are they? No. Hey, nobody knows. Nobody knows. Um, so I guess where I'm at, Ron, is I don't. I didn't really care about Adu dominating. I knew that was going to happen. Mm -hmm. I think the positive from last night's game was that Tennessee was back in rhythm shooting from outside, which is, you know, they were horrible against Mississippi State. You can yeah. disagree with me. I think they tanked that game. But um, I – were, were you encouraged by Tennessee, the rest of Tennessee's offense being in rhythm last night beyond just Adu dominating down low? Yeah, I, I look at it, man. You you take – coming into this matchup, I, I thought Dalton would be Dalton. I thought Zakai would be Zakai. Jonas would be Jonas. Santi, given opportunities, would be him. Josiah would be solid. Was still looking to get him going and scoring. But I like him looking at the basket and, you know, taking his chances. Um, my, my thing walking into it was the bench. What are you going to get from the bench in this tournament? That's the team – that's the people that we need to have the most confidence because when you get to play in these back-to-back -back games and you always – um, scout the starting five without question. When you walk into it, you know what they are, the top six, top seven, but it's that eighth, ninth man that can come in. Like, and we've been waiting on this all season. You can get J.P. Estrella in to be able to get you some valuable minutes, some fouls, some rebounds, um, defending the basket. And also, you know, a guy like um, Jemai Meshack to be able to knock down some buckets, Gainey as well. You got 24 points from the bench. You know what I'm saying? And I think I'm taking out the two from Dillion and the two from Carr, not really counting those, you know what I mean, because it was garbage time. But to be able to get a flow with those guys is as important as it is to get with the starters because there's going to be plenty of times that you run into a team and you may not be shooting your best. And it may just be your starters. You may get a, a spark from your bench, and that's what you're going to need to help carry you through. The depth is always going to be key um, with our question. Um, I expect these guys to – have their rhythm because that's the way they've been playing all year. I thought it was good to see Jonas do it, even though we wanted and expected him to dominate. He's one of those guys I think that he's he needs to build. So him building throughout that game was really good to start off that way. So, Ron. Uh oh. <laughs> I don't even know where this is going. I don't either. I have no clue. Somewhere with Are you ready heads. to admit two weeks ago? When I said Tennessee should just stop playing until the NCAA tournament and they'd be fine, that I was right? No. Because that's basically what they did? No, no, <laughs> That's no. not what they did. No, it's not what they did. And it's not – I'm not agreeing with you, Caleb, because if that's the case, everybody in the country stopped playing. Houston stopped. Kentucky stopped. Alabama stopped. Like, uh, no, no, no. So Auburn was the only one that said, you know what, we're going to keep rolling. <laughs> no. I'm not agreeing with that, Caleb. Not at, not at all. <laughs> they tanked the SEC tournament. They tanked it last week, Ron. Come on. Well, Come on. No. Hey, Ron, let me – now, they did not uh, – Caleb's dead wrong on tanking uh, absolutely. against – Absolutely. On tanking against Kentucky at home on senior yeah. day. That, to yeah. me, is crazy. Yeah. But it wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility – for Rick Barnes to run some things that he knew might not work well against AM to kind of 
do some different things. He doesn't say go lose, but can you can you manipulate a game where you you play you know well, you play okay, but at the end of the day, you kind of prefer to lose it. Can you even would, do that? I would say yeah. If it didn't come down to you just missing shots, like they, those guys are just missing shots. That was the separator in the game. They missed wide open threes, got different possessions, um, different chances in possessions to knock it down and just couldn't make it. Um, you look at Zakai last night and the open shots, like he was nailing them. Those were these exact same shots he was getting in the SEC tournament. So Dalton the same way. Like those guys made shots. I thought that was the difference in it. I, you can, to your point, you know, um, manipulate it if you want, but you can't manipulate guys from putting the ball in the hole. Not when you're open. Sure. I've, I've always heard, Caleb, before you jump in there, I've always heard, I heard this from a bookie, that the way you fix games in basketball, it's not by missing shots or turning the ball over. It's not playing defense. Yeah, not playing defense, and think you got to tinker with the lineup. And I did yeah, that. I think that would have to happen in. Nah, he, he stuck with his guys, so right. He's well, no, nobody's saying. <laughs> yeah, nobody's saying. No, no, no. Yeah, I know. Yeah. No, no, no question. No question. <laughs> yeah, okay, to be fair. We're gonna put an I, investigation on. I can't stay out of trouble today, Ron. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, either way, let's put it this way, Ron. Do you think it works? And we were. I I know at least this with you were this way because I was. You were worried about their lack of depth all year. You were worried they yeah. wouldn't be fresh in the NCAA tournament. Did it kind of work out in their favor that they're back in rhythm and they really only played one game in two weeks? Yeah, um, I, I think that's what, and I, I think that's why you got to see the extended minutes last night with those guys playing, um, trying to continue to keep them in rhythm and play twenty eight to thirty minutes, and you know get the legs up under you. Hopefully, you had to go get a second win. It looked like it a little bit outside of Zakai. It looked like guys had to you know push themselves to get their second win, and they were able to do that come back in and get into a free flow. And I think that's the, one of the biggest things um, going in the tournament play, especially NCAA tournament. You're so hype. Um, you're so hype, man. You run out of energy so fast because you haven't been in that spot. Uh, I think you got to see those guys get their legs up under them, come out and play hard. I think that's a little bit where the turnovers came from too early on. But they're in a good spot right now, man. So, yes, the rest, if that's what it was, it did help. They look springy too. Okay, so that's interesting you say that. So is that just the first game that you're kind of over adrenalized? I think I think it's I think it's all first um first games and so it would be a sweet sixteen game. Um elite eight game. I mean no a sweet sixteen game and a final four game. That's what I would think. You know, you are trying to get your bearings up under you. And it like because you haven't experienced that. You know what I'm saying? Like you you haven't experienced the hype of it, walking into it and you know, everybody being ready to go to build up. You've been building up all week. And that's another thing with the time off. You just continue to build, continue to build. You're like, man, let's get out there. Let's get out there. If you've never been in that position, it's a little bit more difficult. Um, So that's why it's always good to have guys like Santi you can lean on. You got to imagine Zakai being extremely excited to play, Dalton being extremely excited, um, Jonas in his in his role um, being excited to get out there. Um, So it's – yeah, I think it, it. I think it always is in that first round game. You probably get all the way to the first media timeout. Then the starters are kind of settled in by then. That's interesting. And you guys got put in a lot of football um, yeah. stadiums. And I, yeah. I wanted to ask you about that because we always used to talk about depth perception. Portions of the program brought to you by Don Self. Don Self, State Farm agent there in Chattanooga. Customer service still matters. I know everybody wants the best rate, but he'll take care of you when that claim comes in. For 40 years, they built their business on taking care of their customers. 423-396-2126 or just go to donself.net. It's right below donself.net. It's right below in the description. So what's it like shooting in one of those football stadiums? Because to me, it always felt bizarre just to somebody covering it. I couldn't imagine playing basketball. It's just a surreal kind of weird feel. Yeah, I hated it. I, I couldn't stand it. I'm so glad they moved the SEC tournament to Nashville, to Bridgestone. Yeah. You got that type of arena instead of being in Atlanta or New Orleans and places like that, man, where you're in these domes. It's, that depth perception is a real thing. You're used to things going up, not out and up. So it's a little different. Um, but 
I think everybody adjusts. You know, that's why you want to play those non-conference schedules and these smaller tournaments and things of that nature so you can be in different situations. Um, so you can be at least seeing it and um, have a idea of what it's going to look like because there's nothing to prepare you with. You're adrenaline rushing and um, getting open looks. Uh, I think you saw it throughout um, throughout the tournament last night, man. That adrenaline is is, is, is a different animal, man, if you, especially for jump shooters. Like you started – Started pushing the ball a little bit, and things don't go the way you want them to. But these guys were able to settle in, man, and I, and I, and I love that. Uh, Ryan, uh, you know him a little bit, so um, uh, I want to I want you to address something else we were talking about earlier on the on the segment, <laughs> yeah. um, which is, and I always have to qual- I keep qualifying this because I want people to know I usually don't project altruism. I it has to be. Emphasize. I don't project altruism onto coaches. Usually, I think most coaches in, are in it. They 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 love the players. They love the school, but they love themselves a little bit more. By the way, is projecting he, altruism is a nice is a weird, really weird way for Caleb to say trying to be fake and a good person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> projecting Whatever. altruism. Okay, what I mean is like when coaches say, you know, I'm all about development or this. I'm like, okay, maybe, but I think you're all about winning games and collecting that paycheck. But first, um. Am I crazy for saying that Rick Burns is maybe one of the few guys, though, that genuinely does care about player development over anything else he does as a coach? No, I can't. I can't say you're crazy for thinking that. I think he shows it. Um, if you ever get the opportunity to be around him, the way he coaches in between the lines and what he demands of you, um, that conversation is the same way when you pull you over to the sideline. It's only when you walk away from the court. Do you get to see the genuine um, laughter, funny hearted Rick Barnes, the joking one? But when he gets in between those lines, man, it's all business. Um, Like you're out here with your time. Your time is precious and and mine is too. And he treats it that way. So why wouldn't you go out here and get better? I think he's he's one of the guys, man, that doesn't just talk about it. And then when you see guys working out, and it may be like this around the, the, the country, but I know with Rick Barnes, he's there at the workouts. So it's no, um, we're just going to let the assistant run it, man. No, he's going to pop in too, even if he's just doing some work and not involved in the workout. He's in there checking it out, making sure it's it's to a liking um, and you're getting something out of it. So, um, no, I don't, I don't think you're crazy at all for saying that. Good, good stuff. We, we were discussing earlier, Rick Barnes, it, it, you know, is busy projecting altruism. But um, <laughs> I wonder – amidst all that projecting, if he has time to think about the fact that Texas fired him, if he takes that personally, we actually put that as our poll question. Uh, Does Rick Barnes take it personally? And uh, right now here is where that stands, Ron. I'll see what you think. It's about 50-50, 58 to 42%. Will Rick Barnes take the Texas game personally? Yes, they fired him after all. Or no, he's a good person, too good a person. Where would you I, stand on that? I, I think at this moment, um, when he when he left, it may it may have been a bit bittersweet leaving Texas, but I think man, when just being able to talk behind the scenes and talk to coaches that were on his staff, when he got on that plane and he set foot in Knoxville, getting off the plane, kind of left all of that Texas baggage right there. Oh, wow. I think I think he I think he re, uh, removed that from his his thoughts and was. On to something new, um, and it, I think the only way for him to have success in his mind was to be able to drop that, start off with something from scratch, and build it up to where it is now. You know, being there nine years, um, I don't think there's any animosity in his heart about it. Um, does he want to beat him? I think he want to beat everybody he plays. You know what I'm saying? So, um, th- will this be even a little sweeter? Probably so. When you sit back and think about it, um, and then you look at what what terms this is under. This is to go to the Sweet 16 without question. Um, but I, I think you walk into this situation, man, knowing that, yeah, that Texas, I, I gave I gave everything I had. And anytime you can walk away from those situations, you understand where you are um, and you're on the greener pastures, you're in a good spot. It's tough. Is, you know, he and he, uh, Ryan, he talked the other day about just how much the tournament failures have eaten at mm-hmm. him over the years. Um we well, have some theories and philosophies that he practices his team too hard, things like that. But then there's also, but then I wonder, you know, Virginia 
gets first runs exits every year, but they did win the national championship one time. And I'm thinking, is is it just happenstance law of averages, just bad luck that he hasn't advanced more than it is anything else in the tournament? Well, I know for sure the the miss the Purdue let's just look at the Lord last six years. The Purdue game, that was the phantom call. Um the Michigan game, guys just couldn't throw a rock in the ocean, man. Like they got looks. And Hunter Dickerson actually made his shots. Um, they got great looks in the corners. Um, just didn't make make it like to me, when that's the case, it's nothing. He he can't put the ball in the hole. So I think, yes, it's some it's some bad luck with it, but it's it's not because of him. It's just his guys can't make the shots. When his guys make the shots, we're not having these problems. And I'm not talking about going a hundred percent or shooting the way that Kentucky did at Tennessee with those guys not missing. I'm saying just average shots, making those shots, playing accordingly or up to average of who they are. Um is it's never it's never in question. But um I've yet to see him strategically outmatched in the last five or six years. You know what I'm saying? I like I, I can't point to one where I was like, man, dang that wow. They threw some at him. I don't think they was, I don't think them boys are ready. I, that's that's not been the case. His guys are ready. You just got to convert and make the shots. Um, defense has been the same. Um, it's 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 ongoing, man. It's, it's you just got to get over the hump. You that's why you you look for guys like a Kevin Durant. You look for guys like a Dalton Connect to be able when all else fails, give them the ball and get out the way. But in order to do that, you got to be able to get to that point. You got to play the right way on both ends of the floor to get to that point so you have those moments where you can give them the ball and say, all right, take us there. It's the Auburn game at Tennessee. Take us there, dog. Let's do it. Yeah, Ron, I, I was told that Rick Barnes's practices are incredibly intense right up until <laughs> the end of the season and that maybe some of his guys get beat down a little bit. Does that hold water at all from what you hear? Yeah, I can see that. Um, I, I, I've heard that. And i also been able to see a Chris Beard practice as well. And he is, is the same. And he's been successful everywhere he went. The same way he treated the guys at Texas Tech going on that Final Four run, what he was about to create at Texas, the same exact way what he's doing at Ole Miss. When I say intense, I didn't think it could get more intense than Coach Barnes. Coach Beard, man, is you know, on a whole different level. Like, this, I was watching these guys just shoot around, and he was going bananas. I'm like, wow, this is – and now, hey, I mean, to each his own. I like that, you know what I mean? Because I don't have to do the yelling and screaming if I'm on the team. He gets to do it and, you know, keep people. But everybody doesn't respond correctly to that, you know. So, um, yeah, I, I, Coach Barnes, he, he got away with it. Ron, I'm going to use you as a vessel to get revenge on Dave real quick. Um <laughs> So, uh, about, uh, you know, we had, we, you know, during the season, we have Fred White on the show and, and, and with Fred yeah. White on the show, Dave Hooker called me out last year where I didn't have Fred White on my list of top 10 seasons by a safety of all time. So, well, that's because I was um, dumb. So, oh. <laughs> it's, dumb. That was crazy. Oh, wait, wait, wait. But I'm going another level because, Ron, Dave took a very unfair shot at your college roommate this week. Oh, Who where. We were comparing defensive lines this year, which is more about the edge rushers with James Pierce and the one of 2001 with John Henderson and Albert Hainsworth. And Dave Hooker basically said, I'd now rather have James Pierce than John Henderson. Yeah, he said that. He said that. I said in, <laughs> may I explain myself, Ron? I said in today's day and age of where the pass, okay, that I would rather as a whole be better. And I wouldn't have said this just 10 years ago, but I'd rather as a whole be better on the outside of my defensive front as opposed to the inside. That is 180 degrees of what old school Dave Hooker would have said 10 years ago. Yeah. I, hey, I'm, I, you know, Does I'm going to be sense at all. I mean, I'm, I, I know I can understand it a little bit. I can understand it a little bit, especially the way they play. Nobody's going smash mouth and running it out. You throw this all spread out. You need that speed, but. <clears throat> man, wow. to watch okay. with him, Big Al, Rashad Moore, um, Willow Ed Street Kendrick, on the edge. Willow Street, Darn Walker when he was the, like. Peyton, what do you what do you think of my opinion? They're like that is total bullshit. Come <laughs> on, <laughs> get out of here, right? Buddy. Can you get John Henderson to trophy, I'm the trophy winner, man. That's all. I, right. That's all I'm saying. That's just, 
The that's actually what Dave Hooker. This, that's actually right after the Heisman Trophy presentation when they gave it to Charles Woodson. They said, "Hey, Peyton, what do you think?" They're like, "That is total bullshit." <laughs> that was right. Well, well, Ryan, you tell John from me because people have tried to talk about retiring Eric Berry's number, and I love Eric Berry, but I've said from the start, you can't retire his number until you retire John Henderson's number. And I mean, I'm I'm very big on that. All right, buddy. Uh, Have a great enjoy enjoy (laughs) the game. How's your bracket doing? Oh, my bracket is cool. I I had Kentucky getting put out anyway against Florida, so it's cool. Good job throwing heat. Thanks. Look at you, Ron. Yeah. Thanks, man. Ron's appearance brought to you by Dynasty Pools and Spas in Athens. You just go in their showroom. They'll have it delivered with everything you need. That's Dynasty Pools and Spas. I'll even give you chemicals to get you up and going for three months. They bring you Ron Slade, Dynasty Pools and Spas.com. Dynasty Pools and Spas.com. And Caleb, um, when I when I asked Ron Slay that question about could Rick Barnes's teams get run into the ground a little bit too much, I did not think I would get an affirmative answer. Is that surprising yeah. to you at all? It shocked me. And, um, you know, I, Ron is a lot close with the program. I think he, I think he tries his best to be fair to the players and the coaches at Tennessee. And, but that was a, I mean, he did kind of acknowledge that Rick Barnes may be running his team into the ground too much. But he also talked about, but it also plays off what I asked him, which was, again, is is, is Rick Barnes maybe sacrificing wins because he cares so much about player development? And maybe he doesn't take practices off because he thinks that's bad for a player's development long term. I mean, he doesn't want to teach that. Uh, fair enough. Quality Tire Pro in downtown Chattanooga. Quality Tire Pro will take care of not just your tires, but your general service as well. Quality Tire Pro is so easy and convenient to get to in downtown Chattanooga. And the Eberly family has been serving Chattanooga's community since 1957. All major brands of tires, full service automotive brake and alignments, oil changes, more. And all work is covered by Nationwide Warranty. Cherokee Boulevard. Or qualitytirepros.com, qualitytirepros.com. Stop by and say, hey, Bo, off the hook sports sent me. Hey, Bo, off the hook sports sent me. Support our sponsors. That is why we're here. And we thank Quality Tire Pro for being a part of the program. Now, is there any way that Rick Barnes has changed his philosophy and backed off in practice? Typically, of a 69-year-old, I would say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. But I will say in this particular scenario that I think he may have adjusted in the games. So if he's adjusted in the games, I could see him adjusting at practice. Couldn't you? Yeah, I think he... um... I think he may, he seems hungrier this year to win it. And I think it is bothering him now more than ever about the NCAA tournament exits. Um, We're going to visit with uh, T Scott Jones of Banks and Jones after Caleb takes that phone call. And we'll discuss with uh, T Scott how I I believe that Clemson is going to win this ACC lawsuit. I believe that's going to be the case. I'm sorry that Clemson is going. Did I say Clemson's going to win? I believe Clemson's going to win this thing, and I think the ACC could fall apart in months, not years. Two minutes, we break that down. It's time to cherry pick the ACC. If you're the SEC, what schools do you want? Stay tuned. Two minutes, we'll break down the lawsuit that could change college football yet again on Off the Hook Sports. Sports Treasures in North Knoxville is one of the South's largest sports cards and memorabilia dealers, featuring over 10 million sports cards from vintage to modern. Sports Treasures carries a full line of hobby boxes, singles, autographed memorabilia, Tennessee Vol collectibles, fan cave decorations, and so much more. See a museum full of collectibles at Sports Treasures, 4819 North Broadway in Fountain City, and Sports Treasures on Facebook. Sports Treasures, where the real sports fan goes to shop. 
Have you seen the latest TriStar Hats Co. product? TriStar Hats Co.? What's that? You know, those really cool hats, shirts, tumblers, and even license plates with three stars like the official Tennessee flag and stripes like the American flag. Pretty patriotic if you ask me. Ah, gotcha. Seen those. Those are cool. Where can I get them? Simple. TriStarHatsCo.com. And if you order now, there's 10% on any order $50 or more. Plus, use the promo code HOOKED. With the promo code HOOKED, you get 10% off. That's HOOKED. And don't forget free shipping with any order over 50 bucks. Stock up at TriStarHatsCo.com. That's TriStarHatsCo.com. There are plenty of wannabes out there, so make sure you go to TriStarHatsCo.com for the best quality and customer service. Will do, and I'll be sure to use the promo code HOOKED. That's HOOKED when I do to save an additional 10% off. TriStarHatsCo.com. TriStar Hats Co. is a trademark of TriStar Hats Co. LLC. Any use without express written consent is prohibited. Now in its 45th year, the second and third generations continue Joe Newbert's commitment. His vision of what this business needed to be, we still try to live up to that. If we wouldn't put our family in it, we're not going to put their family in it. If you're going to say that you're doing the best work in Knoxville, now saying it's one thing, producing it and providing it's another. The largest family-owned collision center in Knoxville is Joe Newbert Collision Center. The Dave Hooker Show, represented by Banks and Jones, Tennessee's trial attorney. Play to win, banksjones.com. You're listening to The Dave Hooker Show, a presentation of offthehooksports.com. The internet is full of pictures of each and every one of you. Available on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, and the Off the Hook Sports app. Download now for free. Is there nothing you people can't do? Also available on offthehooksports.com. So I don't pretend to know things that are outside of my realm of expertise. I can uh, probably tell you how to throw a football and do some things like that and explain the difference between a 4-3 defense and 3-4 defense. But when I need legal advice, I go to T. Scott Jones of Banks and Jones, who's nice enough to join us because from what I'm hearing, hello, counselor. How are you, sir? Oh, man, I'm tickled to death to have the opportunity to be on the show after I saw the Wildcat tears flow. Ah, so, there you go. I like that. And by the way, thanks for the tickets to the Auburn game. My wife had a blast. Absolutely. Yeah, that, was a lot of, that was a lot of fun. I've been a lot of sporting events, but not as a fan as much. So that was super cool. Um, so here's what I'm hearing from the football community, that they're really thinking that this latest lawsuit by Clemson against the SEC could bust the ACC up within months, not years. Can you tell me, can you give me exactly what this lawsuit is all about? You know, I did some looking on it, Dave, and I mean, what we're looking at is a situation where contractually Clemson had obligated themselves in a contract, basically, for rights with the ACC. Well, we've seen kind of what's going on with the Big Ten and the SEC. And if you look at, you know, the big, if you will, college football playoff packages, things of that nature. I mean, anytime there's money involved, you got to follow the money. And there is a penalty or a buyout clause that Clemson agreed to when Clemson executed the documents with the ACC. So what you've got is a conference that has uh, contracted with a member institution, in this case, Clemson. And, you know, you've got Clemson saying, hey, the fees to basically break the contract are exorbitant and we want out. But then when you kind of look at the root of what all the problem is, I mean, it, it all boils down to money and it boils down to basically certain conferences have adapted and changed with the times and others have sort of, I guess, been lulled into a sense of complacency. I sort of equate it to what I would consider the uh, film uh, digital transition. You know, we all had cameras and we all use film and that's all well and good. But, you know, all of these places that just relied and didn't make the digital transformation, uh, I mean, they're no longer relevant. They're no longer in business except for just sort of a niche following. And so, 
I don't want to necessarily say the ACC has become a niche conference, but the reality of it is they're they're no longer anywhere close to the 800-pound gorilla that perhaps they were in days past. Counselor, as far as Clemson's legal argument, though, um, can they say that the ACC is in a breach of contract by not trying to keep up and not looking out for them because it isn't part of the contract? They have to look out for the best interests of their member institutions? Yeah, I mean, I think they can articulate that, Caleb. I just don't know whether or not, you know, a judge is going to buy into that. You know, obviously the emotion, and if we listen to the echo bubble over there at Clemson, everybody's like, heck yeah, we got taken advantage of, you know, we want to, you know, out of this contract. But, you know, when grown adults represented by competent legal counsel execute contracts, then you, you end up in a situation where you have to have what's going to be articulated as a material breach. You know, there is not a law against making bad agreements. It's just a set of circumstances that, you know, is the judge going to buy that it constitutes a breach? It just seems to me that's hard to get out of. But I, I hear again from the football community that they think it will, that Clemson's plan will work. It's like, I just don't understand how you could sign a contract and just say, I suddenly don't think it's fair. You're the one that signed it, right? Yeah. And I mean, you know, I, I think it, it, it's grossly distinct from the circumstances that, of course, Tennessee in dealing with the NIL and the NCAA, that's not a situation where, you know, you're looking at a just, I want out of the contract. It's a situation where you have that overreach. In this particular situation, and I was looking at when they uh, basically renewed the contract, and I, you know, they have executed that contract the last, and I'm, I'm looking sort of online at the same time at my computer. Uh, they re signed it uh, in 2013 voluntarily, and then subsequently uh, 2016, and it's binding through 2036. So, you know, the reason that they put these penalty clauses in these contracts is because there's justified reliance upon it. When the conference goes and does things, they do things so that they can beat their chest, so to speak, and say, hey, you know, we've got the Clemsons, you know, two-time recent national champions uh, that are a member of our conference. Hence, you, we need all these, you know, media rights. We need money, so to speak. And I, I just, I, I think Clemson's got a hard row to hoe. I mean, uh, I, I, don't, I don't necessarily want to, uh, foreclose the possibility of a win, but you know, uh, it, it, it's going to be, it's going to be difficult. So, uh, can you draw a distinction for me real quick? Cause, uh, I'm, I'm curious if I, if this is a fair comparison or not. Um, we're all music fans and I think we all know throughout history, there are stories right. of artists. There are stories of artists signing really bad deals with record companies. They sue based on coercion and then they kind of get out of the contract because it's kind of, I guess, the idea is they were coerced into signing a really bad deal. It, could that somewhat apply to a school like Clemson or Florida State saying that the ACC coerced them into signing these contracts? Or what would be the difference between that and an artist who signs a bad deal with a record company that gets out of that deal? Well, it's kind of like Gallagher and the watermelon on that. I don't want to dish on Clemson too much, but you know what? Uh, us good old boys in Tennessee over here flipping our hamburgers, we, uh, I oh, we put, yeah. put, put a put a whipping on the boys a few years ago. But no, in all fairness, I think a lot of times when you look at what you're talking about, Caleb, uh, there are individuals that are not sophisticated, perhaps new to the industry. You know, a youngster coming out, they sign a bad deal. They're taken advantage of by somebody that's much more skilled and knowledgeable in the area. Uh, I think it's going to be somewhat disingenuous. I cannot imagine that they've not got a few lawyers over there in the Carolinas that are capable of understanding contracts and that, you know, they were represented by competent legal counsel. I mean, what are they going to say? Hey, our, our, our boys and gals weren't as smart as y'all's boys and gals. It's not, you know, the young athlete, you know, perhaps, you know, the major league ball player, you know, back in the day that gets, you know, uh, signed to, you know, some sort of minuscule contract and they're just trying to hold them to it. So I, I just, I, I think the judge is going to evaluate when you evaluate the breach as far as the sophistication of the respective parties and what they were entering into and if it made sense at the time, just because it made sense at the time, you know, as time changes, maybe it turns out to be kind of a bad deal 
but you still executed. And I, I don't know what they're thinking executing an agreement for 20 years. I mean, a lot changes uh, in 20 years. I mean, a that's, lot. A, that's an awful long time, right? And I've sent a couple of kids to college in, in 20 years. Uh, T. Scott, great stuff. How's your, how's your bracket? Let's pull up where your bracket is, as a matter of fact. Do you, do you wanna... Oh, my God. No, oh I got destroyed. <laughs> oh I, was my like, God. I was like, you know, could we have a competition for the worst bracket? Because I, I may be, I may be running a solid, hard bracket, but I did, I did, and I, I'll let you pull it. I did want my volunteers going all the way, which we, we are alive and well, so perhaps sure. there's a salvage. Sure, absolutely. Well, let's see how you did. All right, so <laughs> let's, pull, let's pull it up right here. Um, Caleb, use your young eyes, or I, I can. So we've got uh, – my wife's already been eliminated, by the way. Former Tennessee punter David Leverton is the highest-ranking celebrity. Former safety Fred White right behind him. We got Jimmy Himes in there, John Adams. Uh, John Pennington of the Sports Source that you can listen to Sundays on WATE. I'm still looking for T. Scott. Oh, there's T. Scott. Uh, there you go. See, you're that's not bad. You're tied for six. I didn't categorize this correctly. So let me go back and fix this. Okay, so you're tied for sixth place. So you've got a great opportunity of, of winning this thing. <laughs> well, you know what they say about a blind squirrel. Even a blind squirrel finds a few nuts, but uh, – you know, my one of my my very dearest friends is a Kentucky fan, and uh, you know, I, I don't want to say I necessarily uh, relish in those Kentucky losses, but I might have sent a text or two, so or eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it, it it's tough. I mean, I, if I'm thinking back over the past five years, was that one tournament win for uh, Kentucky, i.e., one tournament? game one uh over the uh past uh five years and you kind of wonder if the war drums may start beating up there because i mean that is a school you know we everybody talks about you know kentucky's a basketball school you know wait till basketball season well i guess we're gonna have to wait till next basketball season for kentucky. Well, Scott, uh, i'll tell I'm you sorry. a brutal one real quick i, I tell you a brutal one um, you're, you're talking about uh, Oral Roberts and uh, Farley Dickinson have two wins over the past four years. Kentucky has one. You're behind Oral Roberts, for goodness sake. Absolutely. Well, you know, hopefully this is uh, Coach Barnes and uh, my, my volunteers uh, year this year. I mean, you know, hope springs eternal. I mean, I, I look at the talent there and, you know, we get everybody scoring, doing what they need to do. I mean, I think the sky's the limit. You know, maybe we're all gelling at the appropriate time. So, T. Scott, um, it's funny you bring up Kentucky because I just wanted to bring up this point because we're talking about coercion and contracts. You know, that one NCAA – they have won one NCAA tournament ever game ever since Calipari signed that lifetime contract. I think Kentucky might need you to represent them and say Calipari coerced them into signing a bad contract. With them. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, man. I, 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 you know, lifetime's a long time. You know, I mean, yeah. Cal, Cal may have to start wearing bulletproof vests or whatever. I mean, that's a uh, that's scary stuff. I mean, uh, it's uh, one of those things. I mean, uh, you know, too much, to whom much is given, much is expected, and we all know sort of the, uh, if you will, the coaches merry-go-round. But uh, I, I think Cal's got to – he's going to have to perform, so to speak, or fish or cut bait. Um, counselor, last thing. You're different from other attorneys, and the reason I tell people every day it's because you go to trial. You can tell us a little bit about Banks and Jones and why you guys are different when it comes to a personal injury or when it comes to uh, criminal defense. Well, Dave, thanks for throwing that hook out there, so yeah. to speak. But uh, – you know, uh, from our perspective, we are trial lawyers. You know, I tried a jury trial last week in Union County to a very successful uh, verdict. Uh, and if you have a situation dealing with either the prosecution of a case or uh, insurance companies, you know, uh, in these type uh, litigations, uh, just because somebody throws a billboard up or puts a uh, TV commercial out there, you know, uh, it doesn't mean they stayed at a Holiday Inn Select last night and they're all of a sudden an astronaut. I mean, 
you know, you, you've got to actually sort of bring the lumber, so to speak. And, you know, if you're going to talk the talk, you got to be able to walk the walk. And these insurance companies and these prosecution folks, if they think you're scared to go to trial and you're not going to go to trial, then they're going to call you on it. I mean, you know, that's just the reality of it is. I mean, you know, sometimes, you know, when you uh, are, are there and you got a big bunch of lemons, you got to make lemonade. You got to do what you got to do to win. And of course, you know, our mantra, and we trademarked it, is play to win. And so, uh, you know, there's no points for second place. And, uh, you know, it's not like drag racing. Uh, I mean, you know, you, you got to sit there and you got to win every single time. Great stuff. Uh, we appreciate it, Counselor. Have a blessed weekend and tell the tell the missus and your soon-to-be, I believe, uh, would be son-in-law, right? I tell them I, yep, yeah, tell yep, them I yep. said hello. Absolutely. Guys, y'all be good. All right, uh, go absolutely. ball. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Uh, D. Scott Jones, nice enough to join us from Banks and Jones. It seems like a, a cut-and-dry case from a philosophical standpoint. You sign something, that's what it is. But I think that it's, it's a little – unclear and i've been told by football people that this thing could pop and you could see the end of the tunnel which is the end of the acc within months or perhaps a year well listening to t scott jones i was thinking about this he talked about the echo chamber which we knew that clemson and florida state were going to have their echo chambers dave i think the echo chamber. i don't think I, I don't think i know that phrase what does that phrase mean it means where you just hear what you want to agree with. Like, for instance, okay. MSNBC and Fox News are echo chambers for conservatives and liberals. Like, you know, conservatives like Fox News, they, liberals like MSNBC. And they're echo chambers because they're just hearing people report to them what they agree with. And they don't want to hear any opposing views. And Basically, that would be analogous with if we, if we came on and just absolutely said that everything that Tennessee does is perfect. Yeah, that would be an echo chamber. So but we're honest and break news here. That's what we do. Right. And so if you listen to Clemson and Florida State media, they say they have a great chance there's an echo chamber. I think that idea has stretched to the whole college football world because, Dave, I want to be honest, and I say myself included in this, we want to see college football eventually stabilized, right? And that can't happen until the ACC finally implodes. So everybody's hoping that Clemson and Florida State can get out of there because we all think, you and I both think, it's a waste for two great programs like Clemson and Florida State to be lagging away in this bad conference. No, I'm, I'm I'm completely with you. Um, yeah, I, no, I, I completely agree. I think that you and I see the future of college football as we would like it a little bit different. But when it comes down to it, you don't want to see the craziness of Southern California and UCLA being in the Big Ten and all this. I mean, there's got to be a way to make this. You want to stabilize thing. at some point. And it can when this when the ACC is this elephant in the room that just won't go away because they've got this stupid grant of rights contract through 2036. Why didn't somebody tell them not to sign that? I mean, why do you sign a contract that long? Just clearly on principle alone, why would you sign it? You wouldn't sign a contract with me that long if it tied you down i mean espn comes calling you're like no i got a two million dollar buyout with dave so i can't leave well you got to remember this happened right on the heels of the college football playoff and the power five and there was still a belief in the stability of the five power conferences and florida state and clemson at that moment were thoroughly committed to trying to make the acc a better conference because you have to remember this these dominoes didn't start falling dave until texas and oklahoma just bolted overnight to the sec Nobody saw that coming at all. So they think that they genuinely thought that it was going to stay at that power five for 20 years. And it probably would have, have, but once Texas and Oklahoma left for the ACC, that set in motion a chain reaction where like the big 10 realized they got to go gobble up conferences. And then all of a sudden Florida state and Clemson are thinking, Oh no, we're stuck here. I don't think they ever thought they had a chance to get into the SEC. Does that make sense? I think they didn't think the SEC would want them. And now times have changed. The rules have changed. This eater be eaten world where conferences are going to go to mega conferences. Yeah, they could get in the SEC. They didn't think they could 10 years ago. Interesting take. You ready to give some stuff away? We love to do that to end each and every Friday. Are you excited about love that? love handouts. Let's go. Absolutely. It's not a handout. It's I'm a kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's a prize. Okay, so 
this week we'll be giving away it's your choice it'll be a hooker t-shirt we might be able to get you one of those ncaa t-shirts as well as state of tennessee took on the ncaa and won um we're, we're having those printed up if you want to wait on those or we can also hook you up with the celebrate 98 book so it'll be your choice uh, if you're interested in joining hookers corner that's very easy to do can you pull that up caleb and i'll go ahead and show everybody here we've got everybody's names on there and we're going to be spinning but first i want to show you what these people are are able to access and they're called our johns lovingly but we have uh hookers corner patreon page can we pull that up caleb you have that and we yep, can go ahead okay now. You can, all right, I'm going to share that screen and bingo, bango. There you are. You're going to have uh, increased content there, especially in recruiting. It's just $9.98 per month. So we would love for you to sign up. It certainly helps support the channel, but here's what we do. We give away great weekly prizes. And thanks to our friends at Sports Treasures, if I can reach up here, we give away cool prizes like this, the black mini helmet signed by brew mccoy that's what we'll be giving away one week from today but today it's a t-shirt or book it is your choice and uh you you ready to spin the wheel you get excited ready let's go and it's brought to you by sports treasures carrying over five million sports treasures and so much more follow on facebook for the best in sports memorabilia that's facebook sports treasures tn sports treasures tn on facebook so let's spin the wheel who's excited here we go click to spin boom oh uh, looks like steven who i think wait, may have won wait, last wait wait, wait. okay oh. Steven. oh it is steven they try to trick us there don't they that's what they, they do. do they try to trick yeah. us it's exactly right we'll have a pick of the game Let's as see. it'll be Tennessee, texas we'll have our predictions in exactly 30 seconds ray varner ford and clinton that's the way you want to be treated three f-150 four before super cab 44992 a 2023 ford escape all-wheel drive 30,952 2023 f-150 four before super crew xlt 549 ray varner ford your east tennessee ford dealership all right, who you got in this game? Uh, who do you think wins? And what about the spread? So what is the spread brought to you by our friends at BetUS, where you can get 125% bonus on your first three deposits plus 10% gambler's insurance? What is the spread via BetUS, Caleb? Well, the line is not set for the matchup yet because they don't really do it till the day of, but computer predicted spreads are saying it'll probably be about Tennessee by about seven is what people are going to say so um, the guess is it's going to be about yeah so about a seven point spread but that won't be clear until tomorrow tennessee a touchdown favorite we'll go with that number and we'll get caleb's thoughts and i'll have my pick brought to you by bet us America's favorite sportsbook and casino. Live betting and racebook. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. Bet US, where the game begins. Uh, I got Tennessee win of the barn burner. I think that... Barns Tennessee and a barn burner. Yeah. I think perhaps Tennessee goes in a little bit overconfident because of the way they beat St. Peter's. I think you and I view St. Peter's as a glorified high school team. So you shouldn't go in overconfident, but I just think that it's going to be a really close game. I think Tennessee ends up pulling away, hitting some free throws late, and they win about 72 to 64. I'm going to go Tennessee wins about 75 to 67. Um, one of the dangers of this game Very is so Tennessee no, you're supposed to take you're supposed to take three to zero, so we can be like skip Bayless. No, no. One of the yeah. one of the things one of the things that's scary about this game for Tennessee is I will say Texas is not as good technically on paper offensively as Tennessee, but that's actually just because they play slower tempo. They shoot better from three, so Texas is very capable of getting hot if they need to. But so is Tennessee. You never like games like that. You never like games like that because you never know which team's going to get hot and which team's not going to get hot. 
Yep, absolutely. I'll reach out to Steven. We'll get him taken care of. Congratulations to him. He's the big winner. Join now. It's just nine dollars and ninety eight cents. And I can tell you that that helmet that we're going to be giving away next week is worth a couple hundred bucks and more. So you need to join and we'll have increased recruiting coverage as well. He's Caleb Calhoun. I'm Dave Hooker. This has been a presentation of 